Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is Refuge from Narcissism. And this refugee video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous. And here's her story. Hi, Ollie. I'm new to your channel and like to remain anonymous. I'm currently in my 40s, but my story begins around the age four. I experienced abuse from my mother, and while looking for answers, I typed mean mothers into the search engine. Boy, it is usually... <laughs> Usually when you pick up, when you type in mean mothers, bad mothers, why does my mother hate me, um, <clears throat> leads you usually right to narcissism. And it used to lead you pretty much, I was, it used to be one of the top Google returns for narcissism. I mean, I know it's not that anymore, but um, that's usually how that goes down. I typed me mothers into the search engine. From there, I discovered what narcissism was and eventually found your channel. I never received validation from the therapists I've had over the years. Basically, our relationship was viewed as tit for tat. In order to move on with my life, I pushed most of the dysfunction out of my mind. Most people don't understand or believe you when you tell them that you think your mother doesn't love you. To this day, my mother's relatives believe we are just your average complicated mother-daughter relationship. My mother grew up poor on a family farm. <clears throat> she is the second oldest of six children, four sisters, one brother. Her brother went no contact from the family in 1986 after he returned from the Navy. Nobody ever heard from him again. My mother and father are at odds due to my mother's reports of his physical abuse towards her. My father reports my mother cheated during their marriage and slept with his cousin and older brother. Disaster. Disaster. So if you're in your 40s, they're, they're late boomers, early boomers, however you, however you want to label them. Always a mess. Always a mess with these people. My mother had custody of me and my younger brother over the years. She badmouthed my father, prevented him from visiting the house, and kept him away from my brother. The divorce was final in 92. When my mom and dad separated, she got the house and child support payments. <clears throat> I faintly remember living in a large two-story home with many bedrooms. My father said he purchased our home in the late 70s for just under 50000 Yeah, I bet he did. She, she immediately moved in a boyfriend and one of her younger sisters. So I guess you know who was telling the truth there on who's cheating on who and who's doing what. <clears throat> And she goes on to alienate, kick him out of the house, get him out of the house, move in her boyfriend while she's alienating him and bad-mouthing him. Typical. Typical. Typical boomer. Typical. She immediately moved in a boyfriend and one of her younger sisters. We were all living there together. I sort of remember a lot of parties and various people coming by. Of course you do. Of course you do. Because you got another fucker, fucking boomer bitch, you know, making decisions to please her own pussy. I mean, that's as just as big. That's as bluntly as I can put it. That's as bluntly as I can put it. And for the rest of your family... Okay, and here's the thing, and this is why I say your family's not off the hook. There's never, there's never, oh, we didn't know. Bullshit. They didn't see this going down. They didn't see this going down. Fuck, fuck yes, they did. They just didn't want to do anything about it. And then they're going to act like, oh, yeah, well, just all families have problems. This is just typical mother-daughter stuff. Fuck you. Don't buy that shit. Cut them all out. Cut them all out because there's no way that that shit's going down and the rest of your family doesn't know about it. They didn't know she moved a boyfriend in immediately into the house that your father fucking bought? Come on, man. Bullshit. Bullshit.
telling you, this generation, man, I'm telling you. The things they are responsible for. We were all living there together. I sort of remember a lot of various parties and various people coming by. The next thing I remember, I'm being sent to live with my maternal grandparents. And they don't understand what the fucking... So you then you have to go live with your grandparents. And you're telling me they don't understand what the problem is between you and your mother? Are you serious? Are you serious? Fuck them too. I lived with them for two years. Years later, my father told me it was because my mom had lost the home. The bank foreclosed on it due to delinquent property taxes. My father was upset about this because he invested so much into that home. He made many repairs and additions. He added a deck, installed a new roof, performed landscaping, etc. It was about seven years old when my mother came. I was about seven years old when my mother came to pick me up from my grandparents' house. Well, wait a minute. Where was your mother living? If your mother lost the house, did your mother then go off with the boyfriend so she can continue partying and fucking while you lived at your at 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 her parents' house as her parents then go and cover up for all her fucking bullshit? And then going to act like Oh, this is just typical mother-daughter. This is just typical mother-daughter stuff. Bullshit. Bullshit. I doubt they're still alive now. I mean, but bullshit. I guarantee you they set the agenda for the rest of the family to believe that. The rest of the family didn't know you were living with your grandparents where, where, where your mother was fuck off who knows where. When she arrived, she brought my brother. So she took your brother and not you? He then switched places with me, staying with my grandparents while I left with my mom. <laughs> oh my God. Like interchangeable. I can only take one. I returned home to a one-bedroom apartment where my mom lived with her boyfriend. Of course. Of course. That's where she is. Of course. Her fucking boomer pussy comes first. It always has. Always will. This is the same guy. She moved into our family home. I slept on a mattress in, in on the dining room floor while they had the bedroom. And your grandparents allowed this, too. Not only for you, but for your brother. They allowed this to go fucking forward. And now going to act like they don't know what the problem is. I'm sure they're dead by now. But again, I'm sure they set the agenda for the rest of the family to believe what they believe. <clears throat> Later, I found out her boyfriend was married was a married man with two children. He was having an affair with my mother and left his family. He had a boy and a girl. They were close to my age, who he'd bring over on occasion. One thing I remember from living in that apartment was my mother dressing me in a nighty when his kids stayed over. She would have his son sleep with me on that mattress while the girl slept in the bedroom with them. I found that very strange. I remember one time my mom dropped me off at someone's house. She told me to go inside and sit down and not touch anything until she came back. I sat there what seemed like forever. Eventually I heard a dog barking and went outside to see a pit bull tied to the neighbor's house in the backyard. I walked over to pet the dog. Oh God, no. Oh God, no. <laughs> pit bulls. Obviously. He was on a long rope. He began to bark and growl at me. I started to turn and run and the dog grabbed the end of my pant leg. I fell and the dog dragged me backwards. I began screaming and crying for help. He then took a 
bite out of the back of my thigh. I hate these fucking dogs. I hate pit bulls. I hate them. It's like there's always markers. There's always markers for narcissism. Like pit bulls. I talked about in the last video. Snakes. They're dangerous animals. Don't give me how they're ra They're dangerous. They're genetically dangerous. I worked with guard dogs. I trained guard dogs, attack dogs. You don't fuck with pit bulls. You don't fuck with them. You can't break their bite. They don't listen to command. They have been genetically trained to bite and kill. They think it's good. Now I'm going to get the pit bulls emails. The chihuahuas. But, uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> I need to take a sip of this before I... And I, I just had another incident with a pit bull a couple days ago. You know, kids walk in with the thing like, like he's not even holding the leash, not even holding the leash on this thing. And I can eye this dog and I could tell it's trouble. I could see it. It's, it's white, low to the ground. It was a female and it looked like it had just had puppies. And I'm like, you got that dog? Ooh, you got that dog? And I'm making it. I'm going wide and I'm going wide. And then the dog won and he grabbed it. And I'm like, <laughs> I told the kid a few things. I'm like, about the dog coming near me again. What was going to happen? So, and they get this drain, this, this, it's this glazed over look in their eyes. It's you're talking to to, to a dead person. It's like, you're talking to a robot. You're talking to a robot. It's another ism. They're genetically not in there. <sighs> it's pit bulls. <clears throat> As the dog pulled me closer to him, a man came running out of nowhere. He threw something, yelled, and, let, and, and the dog let go. Somehow, out of nowhere, I had the strength to get on my hands and knees and began crawling away. <clears throat> the man immediately picked me up, put me in his car, and drove me to the emergency room. I remember the doctor asking me a lot of questions, and a nurse made me lay on my stomach. She gave me some candy and told me to close my eyes. I had a huge hole in my leg. I ended up getting several stitches that day. My mom and her boyfriend showed up at the emergency room and took me home. I remember my mom cleaning my leg and changing the dressing. She used rubber rubbing alcohol to do this and it burned really bad one night my mom felt my forehead i must have spiked the fever because she took me back to the hospital all because of a fucking pit bull and again your mother putting you in the situation where there is a fucking random pit bull outside i understand he went on his property and he don't know it's the fucking job shut up shut up shut up Chihuahua comes at me, I'm going to kick it into the next county. That thing grabs hold of you, God forbid. God forbid. Thank God it was only your leg. Okay, because if it got you around the neck, or in your face. But again, you're being put in this situation. Your grandparents are allowing you to go to this situation where you're sleeping on a mattress in a dining room with a married... with pit bulls around. I mean, it's the whole scenario. I must have spiked the fever because she took me back to the hospital. I was admitted for a few days. A, m a few months later, we moved again, this time to a city 50 miles away. We lived in an apartment complex. So you move 50 miles away from your brother. So meanwhile, half your mother's 
parental responsibilities at all times are being fucking taken care of by someone else. I was admitted... Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> we lived in an apartment complex. I remember certain things like the school I went to and the friends I had. I remember the Betamax player and watching movies in the living room. It was summertime and my mother and her boyfriend were gone all the time. I was always home alone. One day while sitting outside in the front yard playing with a friend, a tall woman walked up. She had short, curly, honey blonde hair, bright red lipstick, and wore large gold hoop earrings. She knocked on the door for a few minutes and turned around and looked over at me. She walked over and said, where's that bitch? I just shook my head and shrugged. The unknown woman slapped me across my face and left. <laughs> what an environment. Uh, who is your motherfucking now? Right? Is this what this is about? Oh, or is this the boy? Is this the her, her, the her, uh, her boyfriend's wife showed up? Is that is that what's going on? <clears throat> Afterwards, my friend my friend went home. I cried and stayed outdoors until my mom and her boyfriend returned. I must have had an obvious mark left on my face because my mom asked me what happened. I told them. After I told them what happened, they both turned to look at each other. The next thing I remember was all of us moving back to our hometown into a two-bedroom duplex with a full basement. During this time, my brother came home. I had the basement as, so again, you know, <laughs> you've taken abuse for your mother's fucking dis poor decisions. I had the basement as my bedroom and my brother got the upstairs bedroom next to my mother's room. Well, at least she started taking responsibility for him again. This time, this was around the time my father started to come back around. I started to notice that my mom's boyfriend had a problem. He would snort a white powder in the bedroom with my mom. <laughs> of course, boomer, boomer cokeheads. I mean, that and I've done videos on that. I mean... I mean that the cocaine is basically the baby boomers spinach. Like that's their that that's their pa that's their that's their uh, spinach to Popeye. Cocaine up their nose, man. <sighs> checking every checking every boomer box, aren't you? Aren't you? He would snort a white powder in the bedroom with my mom. When the bedroom door was open, I could see them at first. I didn't know what it was, but I eventually figured it out. This was confirmed after Dare came to our school. The detective talked about drugs and the importance of saying no. I raised my hand and told the detective where I had seen that powder before. He then asked me where I lived and I told him. A cop showed up at our house to talk to our mom on the porch for a few minutes. That was the last time I saw the police officer. I attended a good school and had good grades. I was very smart and reserved and shy. I remember being bullied by an older girl who went to my school. So that was it, huh? Cop shows up. You <laughs> tell him, yeah, I've seen that. My mom instead of and her boyfriend, you know, you know, douching their nose every day. He has a conversation on the and uh, on the porch and leaves. Eh. That's child services for you in the I mean, you would have thought it was better in the in, in the nineties by then. Oh wait a minute! It couldn't have been in. It had to be in the eighties if you're in your forties. But you said the divorce. Oh, so your mother's actually still technically married to your father, if the divorce wasn't finalized until ninety two. Gotcha. Okay. I attended a good school and had good grades. I was very smart, reserved, and shy. I remember being bullied by an older girl who went to my school. She was in the sixth grade. She used to run up, push me, pull my hair, and call me retarded. We rode the same bus, and she lived right around the corner from our house. When I first told my mom about it, she did nothing. After bugging her about it over and over again, my mom walked over to her place. My mom knocked, the girl answered, then came out to sit on the porch. I watched them talk while my mom lit a cigarette. I stood there in amazement as she took a drag and passed the cigarette to her. Then my mom... This is in sixth grade? 
the girl was a sixth grader. And your mother goes and smokes a cigarette with her? When I, she did nothing after bugging her about it over and over again, my mom walked over to her place. My mom knocked, the girl answered, then came out to sit on the porch. Yeah, I'm just making sure it's not the girl's mother. I watched them talk while my mom lit a cigarette. I stood there in amazement as she took a drag and passed the cigarette to her. Oh, what garbage. Then my mom said something in their ear and they both looked at me and started laughing. I turned around and walked home. Later, my mom returned and said nothing other than, she's not bad at all. She just needs some friends. For a short time, the bullying stopped. The girl only gave me mean glances. This did not last. She eventually started bullying, started her bullying again, this time much worse. She amped the name call. She amped the name calling and started throwing dirt and rocks at me. The next time I told my mother, she rolled her eyes. In response to the name calling, she said, well, you probably are one. You need to start making friends, then maybe it'll stop. Now go away. The bullying continued till the end of the school year. I also remember not seeing my mom's boyfriend as much. I'm not sure if they broke up, but he moved out for a while. I was around eight years old when my mom decided to assign me chores. She said chores are important because it teaches me responsibility. My mom got a job as a secretary at the local university. She worked business hours, but did not come home right away. She became very cruel and strict around this time. She was moody and quick tempered. I was afraid of her, so I did what she wanted. My brother and I were latchkey kids. He was only four at the time in preschool, and I was only eight. She started making a list of things she wanted done before she got home. She never cooked and always made me do it. When I told her I didn't know how, she would hit me and yell, God damn it, are you stupid? Just read the back of the box. On weekends, we would still, she would still have me do all the cooking. She also demanded that her dinner be cooked, warm, and on the table when she got home. She instructed me not to answer the phone or the front door. My brother was able to go outside and play. I hardly got a chance to play outside. <clears throat> She had a call code. If it, was, if it was her calling, she would ring twice, hang up, and then call back. She barely worked and called off all the time. Cl she barely worked and called off all the time, claiming to be sick. When she did this, she would keep me home from school that day to serve her in bed. She was a chain smoker who drank vodka and orange juice and popped anxiety pills. Well, just like my mom, huh? Except the chain, she gave up. She only chain, she only chain smoked, or she only smoked cigarettes. Like when, when uh, she's like, I forced her to smoke cigarettes when I did something. And again, another typical boomer in an academia job that you can't get fired from. Okay, that you're pampered and babied and put on a fucking pedestal. Doesn't matter. She's just a secretary. She's still protected. She often had the sniffles and the bottom of her nose was always red, uh, probably from blowing so much coke up her nose. She, uh, she, she did some, some real, some real damage. She was always taking Sudafed, oh, Sudafed, so she's basically, you know, taking meth <laughs> and putting Visine drops in her eyes. I remember when my Aunt Brenda came up from out of town to visit for a few days. My mom was working, so it was just her and I and my brother at the house. She brought groceries and asked why we didn't have any food in the house. When my mom got home, my aunt pulled her aside while pointing to the cabinets. She then brought out a Christmas card she found pushed far back at the top of the cabinet. The can, oh, I'm sorry, she brought out, then she then brought out a Christmas can she found pushed far back at the top of the cabinet. The can was filled with white powder. My aunt threatened my mom and told her she better get her shit together or she was going to call social services. Again, anonymous. Your family thinks it's just, just typical mother-daughter problems? Really? Really? They're finding blow in that no food, blow, can of blow in the cabinets. You're living with your grandma. You and your brother are living with your grandparents. She's living in a one bedroom. You're getting gored by a fucking pit bull. And your parents think this is all, the rest of the family thinks, ah, typical. Maybe typical for boomers. Maybe that's what they mean.
when you're a boomer degenerate, yeah, the abuse does seem typical to everyone else. You know, maybe that's what it is. When my aunt left the next day, everything went back to normal. I remember this man staying the night. When I got up in the morning for school, the phone rang. My mother told me to stay home and watch him until she got home from work. As I sat in the living room watching cartoons, within an hour, a man walked out of her bedroom wearing a robe. He sat down on the couch across from me. He tried to talk to me, but I ignored him and avoided eye contact. I focused on the television. He was smiling at me, asked my name and what school I went to. Some guy, some fucking random guy you don't even know? I still did not respond. Thank God nothing happened, but the opportunity was there. Of course, I mean, and this is what boomers... You know, my mother would leave me with anyone. My mother would leave me with fucking anyone. And that's how bad shit happened to me because my mother left me with some gay guy she met at fucking ShopRite one day and said, hey, you want to watch my five-year-old? Eventually, he went back to the room. Minutes later, he came out dressed and left out the front door. I immediately jumped up to lock the front door. Probably your coke dealer. I mean, that's what all that fucking, that's all coke paranoia. All that don't answer the phone, don't go out, I'm not staying up. The reason why she wanted you home with her sniffles is because she was in a fucking coke stupor. And she's fucking paranoid. And she didn't want you going to fucking school telling everybody that your mother's at home all fucking coked out. That's what that was about. That's what the phone is about. I guarantee you she's probably fucking, she was probably banging for coke. A can full of white powder? Shit. I mean, I know nothing about cocaine, how it like, but I know that's pretty goddamn expensive for a can of white powder. But your family thinks this is just typical mother-daughter problems, right? One weekend, she said we were going somewhere. We would walk several blocks until we arrived to a pink house. A guy answered the door and let us in. This was a different man. She made me sit on the couch while the guy walked away. I said, this is another Coke dealer. I sat there for what seemed like forever and finally got up to start looking for my mom. I heard a noise and opened one of the doors. She was there naked, sitting on the bed across, across his lap. Shocked, I quickly shut the door and ran back to the living room. Shortly after, my mom came out and we went home. I noticed a biker coming by on the weekends. My mom would always take off with him on his motorcycle. After a while, my mom got back together with her ex-boyfriend and things became even crazier. Sometimes she left the bedroom door open. They were always in bed naked, cutting up coke on the nightstand. They stayed on. <clears throat> they stayed in the bedroom most of the day having sex she made me responsible for the care of my brother my baby brother was a sickly child and would often get fevers one night something was wrong he was lethargic lethargic warm and had a rash on his chest when i called my mom at work she scolded and shamed me for calling her i rose my voice to tell her something was wrong she came home early yelling and complaining that she might be at risk of losing her job because she left early oh not because you don't show because you left early this time not because you've called out how many times in a coke stupor right this is why she's going to lose her job boomer whore 
This is around the time she started punching me in the face. She would also slap me in the face so hard that my nose bled. She also started to patronize me, calling me names. She loved calling me a pig. She said the reason why my brother was sick all the time was because I kept eating up all the food. But we never had any real food in the house. She was so cheap. When she shopped, which wasn't often, she always brought several boxes of hamburger helper, ground turkey meat, a bag of potatoes, a bag of rice, packets of Kool-Aid and canned vegetables. For breakfast, the only thing we had to eat was the cheap puffed wheat cereal that came in those gigantic plastic bags that were always located at the bottom shelf of the grocery store, and we had to eat it with powdered milk. During this time, my mother was working full time. Well, listen, when you got... <clears throat> Coke is expensive, and you can only fuck so much for so much Coke. So you do have to come up with money eventually. During this time, my mother was working full-time, receiving food stamp benefits with weekly child support payments. I know she had more than enough money to buy proper food. Most, most of the time, she would just give me and my brother from some food stamps to walk down to the convenience store and buy snacks. The corner store... <clears throat> The corner store sold microwavable sandwiches, and this is what we usually ate. One day I saw my mother in the kitchen at the sink, rinsing out a glass. When her sleeves were up, I glanced at her arm. Her right arm, forearm had four to five long, deep scars. It looked as if a large jungle animal had mauled her. I asked her what happened. She quickly rolled down her sleeve and said she fell on Grandpa's plow a long time ago. Later, years later, I discovered this wasn't true. My father said she, she had those before they met. Apparently, when she was a teenager, she cut herself after she broke up with a boyfriend. Her parents had to get her to the hospital before she bled to death. Borderline. One time, her boyfriend wanted to make French. Her boyfriend wanted to make French fries. He made me peel an entire bag of potatoes that night. After I was finished, after I was finished, my mom inspected them and said that I peeled the skins off too thick. She punched me in my face, causing my nose to bleed. She then made me go back and cut out all the extra potato from under the skin. This took hours. I was only in third grade and had to go to school in the morning. I was very tired. By the time I finished, it was very late and didn't get to eat dinner that night. She said this was my fault and sent me to bed. My, my grades began to drop at school. She never helped me with my homework, but when she saw a bad report card, she spanked me. I couldn't focus in school and started daydreaming in class. My teacher noticed, contacted my mother, and said to call a child psychologist. My mother threatened me, saying not to discuss anything that happens at home. During my... Of course not. They don't, they don't want her... <laughs> it's all the protector coke habit. During my appointment, I had nothing to say, so I just sat there. I ended up never returning the therapy. One time, she and her boyfriend dropped me and my brother and his kids off at a nearby park. They told us they would be right back and told us to play. Well, we were there all day. We were getting hungry and started looking around and see if they were coming back. While her boyfriend's son was playing on the monkey bars, he fell off, fell on his arm, and started crying loudly. I walked over, and a man who was watching from across the street ran over, leaned over, and said, I think his arm is broken. Then the man pointed to where he lived. He wrote something on a piece of paper and handed it to me. He said he was taking him to the hospital. I didn't understand what was going on. The rest of us continued to wait in the park. It was getting dark. My mom and her boyfriend returned. And they asked where his son was. When I tried to tell her what happened, she grabbed me, threatened me, saying if I didn't tell her what happened, I would be in big trouble when I got home. Then I started yelling, this is your fault. I told you to, then she, I'm sorry, then she started yelling, this is your fault. I told you to watch them. I handed her the paper. When we arrived home, her boyfriend asked me again. After several minutes, I was calmer, calmer and told him everything. She then smacked me in the face and said, When I asked you what happened, you had nothing to say, but you have no problem telling everyone else, you bitch. She spanked me that night and sent me to my room. She also let her boyfriend spank me after she was finished. I cannot recall... 
I cannot recall celebrating holidays as a child. However, every Halloween, she let us trick or treat. Every year when we came home, she immediately raided our bag. She took all of our best candy and chocolate, and we were always left with the Smarties, Tootsie Rolls, and hard candies. She would then control us with our candy, telling us we were allowed one piece of after dinner, and if we were bad, we couldn't have any. I remember when we had a neighbor move in upstairs. She was a single mother with a toddler. The lady made a deal with my mom to pay her if I occasionally babysat for her. From then on, I babysat for her just about every other Saturday night. The lady would pay me, and when I got home, my mom would take the money. I remember when we bought a new VCR, me, my mom, and my brother were out one weekend picking out, our, picking out movies. When we got home, our front door was wide open. We walked into our place... We walked in and our place was completely cleaned out. Someone obviously broke in. They stole all of our electronics and went through our bedrooms. They even stole the pearl earrings my Aunt Brenda gave me for my birthday. The police and my dad showed up. They eventually found out it was my mom's boyfriend that did it, of course. We never saw him again after that. My dad was pissed and said he was looking for him. My mom told me her ex-boyfriend was a good man. He just had a drug problem. A few months later, again, protecting her pussy. Again, protecting her pussy. And here comes your dad running in. Well, I guess he kind of has to since his kids are there. A few months later, my aunt Lori moved in with us. She was my favorite aunt. She was in her mid-twenties, very pretty, had an unusual punk rock style. She wore spiked purple hair, multiple piercings, heavy makeup. She wore leather jackets and rode a motorcycle. She also worked at a nightclub as a bartender. She just broke up with her boyfriend and needed a place to stay for a few months. My aunt slept in the basement with me and helped me with my homework. We had a lot of f we had a lot of fun and did things together. When my aunt was there, the abuse completely stopped. My mom was very nice and she even cooked. Almost a year Later, when my aunt moved back, moved out, everything went back to the way it was before. Another year later, the landlord announced he was selling the house and we needed to move. This time we moved into a two-bedroom townhouse at an apartment complex. It was around the time I started going through puberty. Mom became even more neurotic, neglectful, and was constantly on the phone, pacing back and forth, gossiping. She was always watching me while I was in, in, while I was in my room or bathroom. She also started dating a married cop. I knew this because I was over her. I overheard her on the phone discussing their relationship. I saw him come and go, but he never spent time with me and my brother. I also remember them arguing and seeing her cry after he left. She immediately came after me, pushed me, and smacked me in the face. Said it was my fault that he didn't want to be with her anymore. It was as if she couldn't go without being in a relationship. Of course not. Of course, because if there's not somebody filling her pussy, then she has no validation. She then started seeing a guy who was a student at the university. She liked foot massages and back rubs. My mom, my mom didn't like doing this, so she made me do it. Oh, he liked foot massages and what? He also had blackheads and pimples on my back. She would make me pick them. She also made me pop the pimples on her back. Well, that relationship didn't work out either. He ended the relationship. She made me call him to ask why their relationship wa wasn't working out. I called multiple times, but he never answered the phone. She also started giving me extra chores, an endless list on the refrigerator my brother never had to do. She also started adding ridiculous stuff like scrubbing the walls and the basement floor. If everything wasn't done before she got home or done correctly, I would either get hit or she'd make me redo it. When I became a teenager, things escalated. I wanted more freedom. My brother got to play outside and see his friends until the sun went down. Meanwhile, I was only allowed and out until the street lights came on if I'd finished my chores. I visited Aunt Lori and told her mom was making me clean all the time. She looked at me in amazement and laughed and said, "Why?" She said, "She said, 
and said, why? Just say no or don't do it. Besides, I was be getting taller and I wasn't afraid as I was before. After I started neglecting my duties and visiting neighborhood friends, she also started after, I'm sorry, after that, I started neglecting my duties and visiting neighborhood friends. She started, she also started college around this time to pursue a master's degree in social work. She was frequently at home completing her homework on the typewriter. She would, she still called in all the time and made me cater her, cater to her. She also started, she also started dating another woman. This lady was divorced with three teenagers. She was ugly. She was an ugly, overweight stud with a crew haircut and had a huge mole on her chin. She would bring her kids over all the time. She had a daughter my age, and my mom would often compare her daughter to me. So now you got to deal with your mother's lesbian relationship. Awesome. Saying she was a, saying she was a good girl and well-mannered, and I wasn't. When we went shopping for school clothes, my mom would pick out similar clothes that her friend's daughter wore, but I didn't wear like her style and wanted to wear what I liked, so I refused. Since I didn't want what she picked out, my mom refused to buy school clothes. As a result, my clothes and underwear became too small and tight. I had to keep trying tying knots in my bra straps and I owned only one bra to keep my chest supported. Meanwhile, my brother got $60 jeans and expensive sneakers. She always said how me and my brother were ungrateful and how she sacrificed for us every day. She also started adding padlocks to the handles on the kitchen cabinets. <clears throat> she locked her food in certain cabinets she didn't want us to touch. We barely had food in the house, yet she continued to accuse me of being a huge pig who ate up everything including my brother's food i was i was a tall thin teenage girl at this time and wasn't even close to becoming fat sometimes she would call me a cow the farm animal she chose all depended on what mood she was in that day she also started ordering takeout for herself almost every day sometimes she would get my brother something and say your sister is being bad today she can't eat with us I could never win according to her. I was always bad because she never cooked. Me and my brother started stealing snacks from the corner gas station. We did this every day and we, knew, and we were never caught. One year for the first time ever, she decided to celebrate Christmas with her girlfriend. I'll never forget the gift she bought me. It was a big box. When I opened it, it contained a small box, and that small box contained an even smaller box. I opened the smaller box, reached inside, and grabbed a pair of cowbells. She began to jiggle them in my face, saying, Moo, moo. That should have been followed to a fucking fist to her goddamn gullet. The cruelty, the cruelty was nonstop. She started locking me out of the house when I came home. As usual, when the streetlights were on, I came home, knocked and knocked. I would eventually give up, sit on the porch, or go to a friend's house. Sometimes after sitting on the porch for an hour or so, I would hear the front door unlock. Then I would be able to get in. Around the same time, while I was in the basement doing laundry, she sporadically started cutting off the light and locking me in the basement. This was usually for two to three hours at a time. As usual, she paced up and down the hallway talking on the phone. I heard her. I overheard her telling her girlfriend that I was jealous of her and I was wearing her clothes. This was around the time I started receiving angry phone calls from other family members accusing me of being disrespectful. Right. So your family members had no idea any lead up to any of this, right? Fuck them. Fuck them all. I told them what she was doing to me, but they never believed me. For many years, I was excluded from attending family gatherings. For every family get-together, my mother would take my brother and leave me at home. One night, she locked me outside again, even though I came home on time. My brother was allowed to go inside while I sat on the porch for hours. This time, I gave up, stayed the night with a friend. She started doing this more often and began calling the police on me, making false reports, telling them I ran away. When I told the police what happened, they didn't believe me and threatened to take me to a juvenile home. I eventually stopped going outside. I would often sit on the couch in the living room, staring in the, fit, in the space. 
I also noticed something. There were family pictures on the wall, but no pictures of me. Just pictures of my mom, brother, some family members, and extended family. When I was 15, I decided to get an after-school job. This way I could distance myself from her and earn money for personal items. I got a part-time job at the grocery store. When she found out, she started charging me rent and wanted $200 a month. I refused. I only earned $575 an hour and wasn't able to buy things I needed. She threatened if I didn't pay, she would call my job and tell her, tell them to send my paycheck to her. I would say, they, yeah, they, they can't do that. I told my supervisor and said this, and he said this is impossible and illegal. Yeah, obviously. Obviously, you can't do that. When you call them on their shit, you find out a lot of their shit is, is, is just not true. One day when I got home, my mother's girlfriend came over while I was in the kitchen cooking dinner. Her girlfriend sneaked up from behind me and grabbed me, pulling my hair while my mom stood there watching. I leaned forward. <coughs> I leaned forward and she started hitting me in my back. My brother rushed in, jumped on her to get off me. This time I had enough and went to, this time I decided I had enough and went to live with my Aunt Brenda, who lived three hours away. She immediately scolded me when I arrived and laid down the rules. She, sh she assured she assured that if I caused trouble, I would be sent home. She soon discovered I was smart and well-behaved and took me shopping for new clothes. One day out of the blue, my mom called and said when she got home the other day, she walked in to find me in bed with 10 men. My mom... My <clears throat> Wow. Wait a minute. One day out of the blue, my mom called and said when she got home the other day, she walked in to find me in bed with 10 men. I thought you're living with your aunt. Like, wait, what? My aunt, okay, wait. My aunt reminded her I've been staying with her for almost two months now. Oh, she must have been in some kind of coke stupor. <laughs> After she hung up the phone, she told me what was said along with the strange expression on her face. That's when it find like, holy shit. Like, everything, everything you've been telling me is true. It's, it's that look of when the mask finally like, oh shit. Now, does, does Brenda, once they realize this, does she stick with it? Does she stick with the diagnosis? Like, oh shit. My sister's fucked in the head. Let's see. She told me what she said along with a strange expression on her face. My aunt said, that was crazy. What the hell was that about? For a while, it seemed like everything was going well, and my aunt was even considering enrolling me in a private school. <clears throat> My aunt had her own kids to care for, so she contacted my mom every week and requested money for my care. My mom was still collecting child support, but refused to send my aunt money. My aunt became highly disappointed with her. I stayed there three more months until my aunt decided to send me home. So, and I understand you, your aunt has children of, your own, uh, of her own. But your mother, now she's seen all this go down. Your mother taking the child support, not sending and not giving a fuck, and now sending you back into that environment. I stayed there three more months until my aunt decided to send me home. When I got home, things changed. She changed my bedroom into her room and changed her old bedroom into a TV room. Since I had no room, I slept on the living room floor. Why didn't she just throw her TV room out and take it back over? When I returned to school, I told the academic counselor everything that was going on at home. My mom removed the locks from the kitchen cabinets. I, that's what I was at. You should have just taken pictures of all the locks and said, this is what I'm living in. I got locks on the cabinets. That's something CPS has to respond to. Has to respond to. <clears throat> my mom removed the locks from the kitchen cabinets before CPT CPS arrived to our front door. She broke down crying 
She broke down and started crying when they arrived. She lied about everything. She told them I was giving her problems at home. She said I was abusive towards her and that I was promiscuous. They completed the inspection and found a few canned vegetables in the, in the, in the cabinets and said we had food. They also noticed I had no bedroom and my mom said it was because I just moved back home. After, the, after they left, she got in my face threatening me. She demanded to know the name of the counselor I spoke to. She then called her girlfriend with the counselor's name, asking her if she knew her. She said everything that goes on at home stays at home. If they come back, they will break up the family. She has also said from now on, I will be fed, but I will receive no love. Fuck you. I went to my father's house for a few days. Like, that was my next question. Where is your father and all this? Why have you not gone to your father? I went to my father's house for a few days. I secretly believed that my father was afraid of her. They were in and out of family court for years over child support payments. It all boiled down to my mother wanting more money every week. My father wanting to keep the peace. He always bended to her will. She called him and told him to bring me home because she had some chores for me to do. I only kept my space clean and refused to do anything else. Eventually, she started contacting, contacting her girlfriend's kids, offering them money to come over, scrub the walls, and clean the house. She became even more uncontrol uncomfortable with my presence. The abuse and her harassment continued. One day when I got home from school, she handed me an eviction notice. I knew this was absolutely insane. It was I was only 16. I also overheard her on the phone saying she was tired of my abuse and wanted me to leave. She also said she wanted wanted to see me in the streets and everyone in the family hated me. In the early 90s, I dropped out of high school. I left I left home to a vocational school in another state. I completed my high school diploma and got my nurses nurses aides training. I was 17 when I completed the program. My story doesn't end here. I still have years of abuse to tell you about. I will submit part two of my story soon. Ollie, I love your channel. Happy New Year to you, and thanks for sharing my story. Typical boomer bitch. Typical boomer bitch. Controlled by her vagina and cocaine. I mean, what 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 more can you say? And you're gonna tell me your family didn't know any of this is going to lead up to any of this, and they have the nerve. They have the nerve to place blame. Like, where were you? Did like, did you miss the part the the part of the cocaine and being having the, to to live separately and on a floor and getting gored by a fucking pit bull? Like, you all miss all that. No, they didn't. They just don't care. They just don't care. Another boomer paradigm fan. Like, it is horrible. So, I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your contribution and Story Anonymous. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, if you have a topic you'd like me to cover, something you'd like me to expose, you'd like to set up a Skype phone call, have a private video made, you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or you just like to make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful. Those monthly uh, contributions, those monthly recurrings are also awesome as well. Because if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been Refuge from Narcissism. Take care.